All right. Hey, my name is Jason Lee Morrison. Uh, I'm on with Marcus Sylvanus. Uh, this is the perfect fucking life. Um, this is podcast number zero 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 one because I'm sure there can be many. Um, thanks for joining me, brother. Yeah, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, man. Uh, we're just gonna talk about um, important shit. I think <laughs> that's that's the plan anyway. But we'll see how it goes. So I just want to splash this up on the screen real quick. We are somewhat sponsored by uh, Veteran Trash Talk. Um, and that is, uh, hold on, I'm going to work this out. Fuck it. Anyway, Veteran Trash Talk is a, if you haven't uh, dialed into their stuff, they're fucking awesome. They, uh, they've supported me uh since uh they i got in touch with them after i wrote my book the perfect fucking life which is right here um i i wrote this in the throes of navigating my way through ptsd and uh they have helped me very much in many ways one of which is kind of finding a little bit of confidence in myself really to to put my book out there you know because like you know you, you have these thoughts marcus and you you write them down maybe or you i don't know you keep them in your head somewhere and you're just like this is just something that i go through and maybe it doesn't apply to anyone else but turns out like holy shit a lot of people it really uh it resonates with people so well, it's, it's really vulnerable to do it well that dude exactly you know and here's the thing, if you don't fucking put yourself out there, then you can't fucking, no one can identify with you. Only the squared away, never had a problem in their life, people. And I've never met one of those, <laughs> especially amongst us veterans. Right. Can identify with it. And, you know, it's not just us veterans, but dude, so many of us have post-traumatic freaking stress from one reason or another uh, i have it from combat and i have it from past relationships and a lot of things so that's that was just my navigation through it all but the, the veteran trash talk guys they they brought me on their podcast and and they said hey you know we'd like to um be very happy if if uh you were to do your own thing and we'd splash it up on our stuff so very cool of them to do so so anyway marcus here is a, a buddy of mine that i met uh virtually as actually a lot of my close friends are now because of covid has been really cool because uh, you know trial kind of does that it opens up new things and it's uh the everything's virtual now so it's yes. fucking awesome man I've got, I've got to meet you marcus and just through some of my stuff that I've been splashing up on social media, we kind of has resonated with you and we've gotten in touch and bullshit about it. So anyway, just tell me a little bit about yourself, my friend. Oh, well, okay. Um, well, I was born in West Virginia. Um, like I, like I was telling you the other day, um, this is how, this is how stupid I was when I, when I joined the Corps. Um, I mean, we were totally insulated back in those days and, and i'm not sure if it was the same way where you grew up or not maybe it was by virtue of being in the mountains um but i didn't know that like <laughs> i was like two years into the marine corps and i didn't know the cia was like a real thing <laughs> i thought it was like something that was made up in movies because man movies were just my conduit for everything you know i mean brother i, I grew up in indonesia <laughs> man like uh, I know, I used to listen to the Voice of America on the radio and be like, "Whoever's talking right now, that that dude's in America." I'm like, holy shit, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So I know I was totally removed from everything, and then I joined the Marine Corps. So I I could definitely identify with you there. Yeah. Um. It was, it was rough growing up. Man. Hmm. I'm I'm putting it mildly. Anybody that's from Appalachia knows what I'm talking about. Um. The entire region was dependent upon the coal mining industry which was going down 
when I was coming of age um, and is now gone. Huh. Um, and there wasn't much else around there. And people want to stay because it's their ancestral homes, right? Yeah. They feel a connection to the to the earth there. And um I moved. <laughs> Obviously. Where are you now? I'm in Southern California. I'm in I'm just outside of 29 Palms. I'm in what the fuck, bro? You <laughs> moved <laughs> you... Yeah. <laughs> you moved to 29 Palms. <laughs> ah so yeah um jesus no i'm just fucking with you so i bought a house i got i bought a house i got out of the core and i was contracting on 29 palms and i got divorced and i kept the house and got a new wife and that was almost seven years ago dude yeah man it's crazy you mentioned that because uh it's something that a lot of vets go through divorce and every single one of them that I've talked to is like, dude, I, I've been in three fucking wars and I have never dealt with anything as difficult as a divorce. That was, that shit was hell. Yeah. Yeah. Especially yep. kids and everything. Like yep. it, that's it, the it, hardest thing I've ever been through. And it's something that, as you know, I still deal with every single yeah. day. So. Yeah, and unfortunately, me and my my current wife, I, there's still baggage that I project on her. Um, like there's still things that I tiptoe around her about because it was something that was edgy in my marriage before, you know. And so she's paying a price now because of issues from my last marriage. But I think the biggest thing was is I got out of the Marine Corps, right? Hmm. I got out for my family. Dude. I got out to be a dad. I got out to raise my son, to raise my daughter. Um, and then within two years, it, it had all fallen apart, man. Like, I didn't understand that at first, but hmm. I look back in retrospect now, and I do understand it because that status quo was comfortable for everybody. Me hmm. being gone, you know, even when I was yeah, here, yeah. I was trained. And she made all the decisions <laughs> dude that's funny because uh, it's not funny at all but um it was about two years after i quit deploying that my whole world fell apart uh in my case there was definitely some shit on the radar for me but i didn't know there's a lot that goes into that um but i think like I said, as us as as veterans and and anyone who's been through a divorce, man, when you're tearing a family apart, um, especially when you're like making overtures to try and like renew that to and reinvigorate. It. That's why I quit deploying. I was in the Marine Corps. I got out after the invasion. I thought the war was over. Like I said, I, in 2003, I did the invasion with Second Force Recon, and then. Uh, I came back and I'm like, oh, there's nothing else going on. Uh, I was trying to move on to other things and they, those doors wouldn't open in the military. So Marine Corps wouldn't let you leave and go to other certain places that secret squirrel shit that I wanted to do. And so I was like, you know what? I, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll get out, go, go see what else is out there. And then the war blew up again It kicked off. So I started deploying again and uh, it must have been, yeah, first part of July 2004, I showed up in Ramadi and uh, as a contract for uh, probably not allowed to say their name or the fucking have some issues with me or whatever, but large contracting company. It was sure. Um, anyway, I worked for State Department and other organizations overseas for until like 2011. And that's, I got married in 06. So like in the middle of that, um, met someone who got married, but same thing at the point constantly. Every, it was like three months on, three months off. Uh, usually less than that because the more time you get on the ground, the more you got paid. So, you know, we were basically mercenaries, but we had the nice moniker of working for the State Department or whoever we worked for. Uh, anyway, 
I came out of combat zones and then within two years, dude, it all just started like within months. I could kind of tell like, what the hell's going on here? Like, why am I struggling with this shit? Mm -hmm. And because I didn't know, I, I didn't know. I've never been a fucking civilian before. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. I was a high school kid. Then I was, uh, then, you know, 15, 16 years later, I was a civilian. I didn't know how to fucking deal with it. And, um, that's, yeah, that's when it started like crashing down around me. And when it, when it rains, it pours. So, yeah. That's the darkest place I've ever been in my life. Brother, crying yeah. myself to sleep every night. Yeah. 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 Drinking yeah, myself, man. drinking myself to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No um, shit, brother. No, yeah. I hear you. And, you know, it's not, I'm not going to say it was like they did this or they did that or I did. It takes two. What the fuck happened? I'm still trying to figure it out. But yeah, it takes, it definitely takes two to take. It takes, it takes two. I mean, there's, there's things that I did that really screwed up my relationship with my ex-wife for sure no no doubt about it and i own those but i don't own the, the totality of it um because in the end <laughs> this is going to sound mean to say she might hear it but in the end she quit mm. Dude, and i, and and I end, think sometimes and it, i quit so but there's got to there's a Everybody's got their line. Everybody's yeah. got their line. But fuck you for doing this on my first fucking podcast. Man. This, is the, <laughs> this is the most difficult shit in my life. And you're bringing it up like right out the gate. But it's good. It's good. Um, actually, of action, I think right? both of us quit on each other. Yeah. And there, I, I, I never ever want to cast doubt upon the parent of my kids you know i actually frankly i don't have a relationship with my kids right now which is the worst part of my life um, there's a lot that goes into that and everything i do the reason i wrote this fucking book the first and last pages are dedicated to my kids it's a letter to my kids now some parts in this i hope they never read because this is pretty gnarly shit in there uh yeah but actually I, I I guess I wrote it because I wanted them to know who their dad really is because I had I didn't have a relationship. I haven't had a relationship with them in years since shit, probably six years or so. And I thought I missed the hell out of them. And at least one of them doesn't want to have shit to do with me right now. But yeah. um you know, my whole purpose in life is to change that, really. Mm -hmm. I don't know where that comes from because I, and you know, it's weird when, when you're in combat, the guys that are married and have kids, and did you ever notice this? They, it affects them differently. Yes. Yes, it does. Yeah. yeah. And it affected me differently as well. As soon as I had my son, I cried my eyes out at the airport leaving. You're more careful. Yeah. You, you start thinking, you start thinking about decisions maybe a little bit too long maybe maybe um, yeah maybe you're not aggressive enough that that was what i experienced anyway well remember in the 80s in the marine corps they wouldn't even let you join the fucking marine corps if you were married yeah yeah <laughs> like sorry and frankly i kind of wish i had that attitude a little bit more now because the attitude was more of like hey what's our purpose as a fighting force here um are we around to like make people happy or we're right, gonna right feel really bad maybe bleed out yeah <laughs> like all this and i don't mean to change the subject so drastically but no, we were talking about this uh before we got on the on the call here what the fuck's going on man like you can't call you can't call a fucking male officer sir you can't call female officers ma'am anymore like I think, come on, you sons of bitches. You really, you want to live forever? <laughs> come on. Like, what the fuck is going on with my Marine Corps right now? And the Marsoc three yeah. guys hung out to dry because yeah. we got a bar fight. Yeah. And you watched, have you seen the video of that shit? No, I haven't. 
It's a shit show. The, the is this is this an upsler? No, no, no. Um, forget the name of it. Was a it was a contractor, uh, and then three three Marsoc dudes, two Marines and a and a corpsman. And um, actually, the trial is going on right now. And if you watch the footage, the and I'm trying to be as unbiased as possible here because I don't care if you're Marine. The, the contractors are former SF guys, so there might be some, in all respect to SF guys, fucking love them to death, work with them a lot, great motherfuckers all the way around. But this dude was not a one-punch wonder. He, he was a big, hefty motherfucker. And uh, apparently there's footage of him talking shit to people in the bar and this and that. I mean, we've all done that shit before. But, um, he was a hefty dude. And then there's footage of them outside the bar. And, uh, there's some words and pushing and shoving that goes on. And then one of the Marines hits him because he hit one of the Marines buddies. And then you see the guy just hit the ground like a sack of shit. And like, you can see his head just smack into the fucking pavement. Damn. Yeah, dude. And he ended up dying. The corpsman immediately ran over there and started administering aid. Um, and administered aid to him all night until he fucking died. And according to some reports, he died in, from his own vomit, suffocating on his own vomit, et cetera. He's pretty intoxicated according to the footage and everything. But now we're, now we're, I guess my point is like, we're burning people to the ground just to, I guess it's kind of a Marine Corps thing. When I was in Okinawa, we used to do this shit. We'd make a minor fuck up and then just beg the shit out of everyone for forgiveness. For, but defending yourself, as far as I'm concerned, isn't isn't minor. But now they're trying to ruin three Marines or two Marines and one sailor's life. Like they're literally fighting for. They might be in for 22 years or more. The crews are already fucked um, over this whole thing. Yeah, it, yeah, it it is. You're right. But we're. we're we're at the verge of facing a potential world war. Mm -hmm. And we have the Russians in Ukraine. The <laughs> Russians have thankfully proven themselves to be pretty inept thanks to their own strategy and fucking thank thankfully communism has more bureaucracy wrapped up in it than capitalism, even. <laughs> it's insane, right? Like who would have who would have thought that it that they would have been so centralized in their decision making. I know. Haven't they been watching us and taking notes? Like, and like, right. Oh, been doing? And we've been fucking up. Like I saw, I was there in an invasion and we sucked. Actually, we did. Yeah, we did. We were not as fucking on point as we should have been. I remember Lieutenant Colonel's freaking out. Like, no one knew what to do. We hadn't been at war in ages. And I saw this. I was in Israel during the Hezbollah, the Israeli thing. And these Israeli kids would come back from the front and be like, oh, shit, man, they were in fucking, his, his, the Hezbollah guys were in Israeli uniforms. And they were flanking us. We didn't know who the fuck, what the fuck. How did, they, they got their asses kicked for the first little while of that war. It takes you about eight to ten months to figure out how to fight a war again. And remember, it was like, that's why there was that lull when I got out of the Marine Corps. You had 03. We rolled in there, just brute force. Yep, yep. And Overly, probably overkill. Definitely overkill. Definitely, definitely. Talk to first LAR. <laughs> yeah, God no bless. Doubt. No doubt. <laughs> God bless them. But uh, running point for the whole thing. But um, it takes a while to learn how to fight a war. Right. And um, we're seeing that with, but the, the, thankfully, the Russian bureaucracy, which is part of communism, is slowing them down in the way that they're developing and the way that they're responding because the ukrainians they had to respond with not with just um their military because they were totally soviet doctrine but they then suddenly integrated all these civilian motherfuckers i know of a uh uh it was a civilian there was a civilian drone manufacturer called aerorodvitska and actually i've been working with them uh somewhat professionally a little bit uh trying to help them out a little bit but 
it's there that outside the box thinking from the commercial side that has really that they became the they became a military unit then they became an ngo but the whole time they're still bombing russians with their drones so it's probably the first ngo that's like a combat ngo <laughs> which but they've had great effect because they develop they build the equipment then they field it then they utilize it and i think that the necessity of having to bring all that civilian like not i wouldn't even call it ingenuity i'd call it panic but panic inspires innovation right? yeah it really does though right i mean yeah so they've reached out to everyone they could they couldn't just rely on their military and so the the outcome of that was that they're much more forward thinking than the communist way of thinking that was the, U the old ukrainian military way of thinking which is the present russian paradigm but the problem with the Chinese is they have this deal hooked up with their industry within their government. I don't know all the ins and outs of it, but basically they can flip a switch just like we did in World War II and all of a sudden bring all this industry to bear on their war effort. That's right. And that's yeah. much that's much more agile than we're capable of. Yeah. So that's actually one of the things that I'm trying to do on the business side is trying to like get the DOD to reinvigorate like revitalize our processes of taking in new not just new technologies but new ideas and fielding them faster than as fast as the speed of war that is it's such such a horrible process man i oh dealt with God. it i dealt with it when i worked at mctag um because we were trying to we were trying to get a different simulation that was going to do something else that our program of record couldn't do and everybody you know the gatekeepers are everywhere man oh man everywhere they're and baked they're in little, little they're little empires and it was this, exactly the reason it costs so much to do anything for the dod is because of all the bureaucracy you got to pay right. for all that yeah. yeah yeah it's it's like it's opposite of <laughs> it's opposite of war where war is an absolute exercise and absolute creativity whoever whoever's the most creative the quickest wins boom that's boom. how you win a war absolutely and the faster you can get an idea to the front lines that that's motherfucker right. wins and it's not just a one-time thing it's not just hey i just made the f-35 which by the way took us 35 fucking years to do. yeah it's yeah. that idea and then the next idea is the next fucking day because the end user gets this fucking this thing into their hands is like, hey, this knife won't uh, disarm fucking mines. Well, guess what that's called? That's called it's not a, that's not a, called a complaint. That's called a requirement, right? Right, and you bake that in the next day, and you just keep spinning and keep staying ahead of the and the speed of technology. Like, how fast is it? I guarantee you, Apple right now, what iPhone thirteen they're on right now, or something like that. I guarantee they're working on iPhone 16 right now. Shit. And it's and it's already got something on it that you absolutely needed. You didn't even know you fucking needed exactly. it. Exactly. It's it's how great they but are. They're working on it right now while they're fielding this one. Yeah. That, but we just do this thing while here, here's this. Go run, go kill people with it. Have a good time. Like, no, we need to be rapid enough. And actually, I've worked with some software companies that have done this and actually made a great name for themselves because they were sitting right next to the guys bitching about the problem. They had field service reps out there. And every time a uh, field service rep would be like, Hey, this, like this thing doesn't, this thing doesn't pound in nails. Well, it's a fucking knife. It's not supposed to pound in nails. No fucking wrong answer. Go back and make it pound in nails. That's what they need. Right. Right. If you can spin right. it that fast, so that's the only way to stay ahead of someone that can outproduce you like the Chinese. Right. right. And plus not just outproduce you, but overwhelmingly outproduce you. Yeah. It's scary. Right. I mean, it is really, really scary. There's a book I read years ago called death by China. And I can't remember the author, um, but this is maybe eight years ago. I read it and I kind of thought that it was a little crackpot ish at the time. And today I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. You know, and then I, 
there's Chinese investors like going through our neighborhood right here and buying mm -hmm. properties up. It's it's insane. It's it's not see Americans think very kinetically. It's like hey, we see a problem, we're gonna go attack it head on. Yeah. And pragmatism, America. So I like I said I, before, I grew up in Indonesia, right? So I don't. My parents were Americans, but I grew up in Indonesia. So I'm as American as you can be. I love this country. Like like I said, I used to listen to the radio and be like, oh, that's America. Like I love that fucking place. I remember looking out of the window of an airplane, like. For three hours on the way back to the U.S., looking to see my first glimpse of the United States. You know, I fucking love this country. Uh, I came back to here when I was eighteen, and I was plunged into a place that I didn't know shit about. But because of it, I, I see things very. I see things through like a third party lens almost. And this American pragmatism, everyone like I've seen it on resumes, where people uh, where I'm vetting people for to, to, for hiring them. And like I'm a pragmatic thinker, and that like, that is not a good thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you boasting about that? Prag pragmatism means that you are only concerned about the first order of effects, right? Right. And you have seen it over in Afghanistan and Iraq. The first order of effects. Oh yeah, you drop a JDAM on a fucking yeah. on a little village. Great. You just blew up their fucking well. Right. Now they're pissed. Yeah. Now all the fucking clams and everything are mad at you because you just blew up the only water source they had. Yeah. And the second, third order of effects are going to last eight years until yeah. they build a new fucking well, and they're they're, they're going to hate you the whole fucking time. Yeah. The and second and third order of effects are last like orders of magnitude longer than the first order of effects. Yeah. And American pragmatism. This is why we have the problem with Stinger missiles in Afghanistan shooting down fucking, and we're worried about them shooting down airliners. It's the same goddamn thing. You know what I'm saying? Like I do. You can't just walk into a foreign culture and try and foist your fucking beliefs on someone without understanding what that culture is. But that's right. And it, and it's, it so oftentimes it's so starkly different than what you would expect. It would be because of your, your lens of American exceptionalism, which every American has to some degree. We, we have to, um, <laughs> Well, I mean, it would be an exceptional thing to say. We have to because we're Americans, right? We do. But yeah, kind of. You right. kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like it's kind of cool. Like Superman doesn't get it. Right. He doesn't understand the homeless guy. Right. Sorry. Right. He doesn't. How can he? And I'm not saying we're superheroes, but that to my point before, we were, we were talking about this before, that something very American is cowboy and the superhero i don't know if they were superheroes before america came about but i'm pretty sure america was the first <laughs> that came up with that whole concept yeah. yeah like someone don't worry about it someone's gonna come and fucking say yeah. the the fucking uh cavalry the cavalry is gonna come and say there it's yeah. in every fucking john wayne movie yeah you know Right. And that's a cool thing about America. And that's how we see ourselves. We are the cavalry. We're going to come and save everyone. But this is what kills me about all these motherfuckers that are like, yeah, we're a bad motherfucking nation. Like we have some issues. Don't get me wrong. That's, that's kind of my point. But who the fuck else is going to like these guys that are all concerned about climate change and they hate this country. I believe I, I think we need to do something about it. I really like that's an issue. I'm not fucking I'm not uh discounting that whatsoever. But if America loses its place of power, who the fuck is gonna be worried about climate change? Switzerland? Yeah, but what the fuck are they gonna do? The Chinese don't give a fuck. <laughs> You know, who's going to be worried about the fucking important things? Yeah. And I don't think that the average American, I think they understand that. I think most of us can remember before the wall collapsed and remembered what it was like being locked in that, that two, that, that um, dual polar world yeah. between us and Russia. 
Um, but I don't know if many of us do though anymore, bro. That was a while ago. Right. And I mean, we were kids, right? I mean, yeah. we were, I mean, God, how old was I? 10 when the wall fell? Something like that? Nah. That was Some, a bit ago. <clears throat> That's when we still like had movies like, uh, what the fuck was the name of it? Fuck, I forget. But it was about nuclear war and shit. Like, so that was an expectation. Like, this is how the world's going to end. Yeah, and now and we're our- back, back to square one, which is kind of hilarious. So, yeah, so. we keep coming full circle back to it. I mean, I, I guess that's the. So I think it has to do. I'm going to go deep here, all right? But I think it has to do with um, tribalism. Hmm. I th- and I think that's that's one of our greatest things to overcome as Americans, as America, is to overcome our tribalism. Um, because we all have it we're doing it right now you and i having this conversation is a is a a display of tribalism you know um and it has nothing to do with us both being white it has to do with you know our our vocation Um, Hmm. and you see that delineated across so many different cultures that have come into america but we're not we're not messing with those other cultures, you know? I mean, like, tell me, tell me what, what language does an American speak? Who's, who's an American? Who's their God? What's their religion? Uh, what's, what's an American's, um, tell me something culturally that's just culturally American. And you can't pinpoint one thing <laughs> to any demographic. Really point. Um, and we tend, so we're living in a, I would call this a, a chaotic information environment. Hmm. Um, the 24 new, news hour, the 24 hour news cycle is gone. Um, what is being reported isn't ground truth, and people know that. So, what do people do when there's obvious misinformation at play and they don't know who to trust they they gravitate quickly towards their tribe which they trust so it's the same as some you know you've got the extremes on our two-party system you've got the the republicans and and the democrats and they're they're both clinging tight to their virtues right now because the only way they get elected right yeah the only way you can get elected is to polarize yourself yeah yeah, I, I I totally agree. To polarize the people. Well, and that, so that's my problem with social media is it's designed to, those memes are designed to make you either laugh your ass off or be pissed off, you know? And it's, it's my point is it, they're designed to, to give you that emotional response, very quick, very visceral response, you know, and that's not good because... <laughs> that's just that's american pragmatism first yeah. order of effects right yeah. there that's a great point yeah yeah it's like how can i get the fastest thing it's fucking the drive through how can i get something at the fucking mcdonald's drive through i want it right now this is what i want and in fact um there's a so there's like a serotonin boost every time you get right. someone to comply with or respond to your your opinion whatever but, you know, it's hard. I don't really like saying it's like the media or, well, the media is a little bit different because the media, if you're talking about the uh, primary channels of communications to dis- to the, as you were discussing, which most people don't actually subscribe to that anymore. So they do default back to their tribe. Right. Uh, right. Social media has taken taken over but that is very um the whole basis of that is an ego thing the whole basis of social media is like how many people can i get to pay attention to what the fuck i have oh to yeah, say? yeah 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 and the crazy yeah. thing is is once you get there this is this is this is what kills me about <laughs> um becoming whatever famous or whatever 
whether it's social media or otherwise. Okay, you're vying for attention. I get it. I mean, fuck, right now I'm doing a fucking podcast. I want people to fucking read my book. I want people to hear what I have to say. But the reason is because I think maybe someone's been through some shit that needs to hear what I have to say. What kills me is when I don't care how you get there, whether it's your fucking, you get to fake being a, a badass if you're an actor, or you got fucking great fingernails and you fucking splash that shit all over social media, whatever. Okay, you, you have our attention. So, okay, you have our attention. We're all sitting there watching. You're at the Oscars and you get up there and you get your fucking award. What the fuck do you, okay, you have our fucking attention. Now tell us something. Nothing, nothing. You have nothing to nothing. fucking say. Nothing. nothing to say. No message. You I mean, have nothing and you have worth it. listening to to fucking say. <clears throat> and, and I see it. I didn't, I guess I knew it at some level, but I didn't really know it till I started talking to these people out here in California that is connected because everybody's connected to Hollywood here, right? Yeah. In some way, somebody's a writer or they're, you know, a stagehand or they're a grip, whatever. These people live their lives and and you think I was isolated growing up in West Virginia. These people live their lives completely insular. It's almost like a cult huh. around Hollywood. And what's dangerous about it is the, the impact socially and politically that a movie can have, that a writer can write this idea into a movie and then all of a sudden it starts getting traction within the people who see it, but none of it's based in reality is my whole problem. Mm -hmm. It's, it's all just a made up fucking story. <laughs> like, well, not only that, but the people who are playing that, this kills me, dude. It fucking kills me. I see it all the time on social media. They're quoting some fucking actor from a movie. He didn't even write the goddamn line, but he said yeah, it. And now yeah. everyone's quoting him as like, yeah. he's a fucking actor, bro. <laughs> I don't care yeah. how cool you look and shit. I don't care how many gun courses you, you know, and God bless them. There's some great guys out there that are actors. I am not discrediting that fucking profession at all. But don't fucking talk to me like you walked in my goddamn shoes because you played a fucking sniper in some goddamn movie. Right. Fuck you, right. man. Right. Don't pretend that you can have a fucking voice. When your whole life is to pretend to be someone else. Okay, you are great at that. And, and there is nothing wrong with that. And it's beautiful. And that goes all the way back to the fucking, the Greeks fucking building theater and all this stuff. Like Homer and the Odyssey and, and fucking William Shakespeare. And it's beautiful. I, I'm an artist. I fucking get it. But don't pin your life to someone pretending to be someone else and then make them your goddamn hero that's right and as as kids like you, you okay so i start like going back and dissecting how it was that i, I knew at mean. such a like young age oh, like series freaking out on me right now <laughs> <laughs> oh, how i how i knew at such a, a very young age what i wanted to do with my life and i knew that i was going to be i knew i was going to be in the warrior class somewhere i didn't know exactly where or where that might fall to hmm. um and it wasn't real it wasn't real till it was real right yeah it wasn't it wasn't a game in my head a lot of people i've talked to they you know they say war was just a game but it wasn't like that to me like i was training i i knew that the possibility was was real but it wasn't real till it was real and i, I go back and i start dissecting that and i'm like well first blood <laughs> My parents let me watch First Blood. They let me read it first, actually. No shit. Yeah. I didn't know it was a book first. Oh yeah. Did yeah. you watch? Did you read the book before it was a movie? Yeah. No shit. I, I read the book before I saw it, so it oh, came shit. out. Ah, okay. Before, but I think 
that's back when we read books and shit. Yeah, yeah. Cool. And it was if you haven't read a book, you should try yeah. it. It's pretty awesome. It is <laughs> I've got books it. everywhere, all over my house. <laughs> I love reading. Um, and then it like, you know, the whole Steven Seagal like craze in the 90s, you know, where he is the ex special seal ranger recon guy you know in every movie who's now uh you know an alcoholic detective (laughs) (laughs) no just just that whole cheesy action movie thing well i started getting this construct in my head of based on that what it was like what it was going to be like and it was (laughs) of course not i mean what a ridiculous thought right but but dude i think there's something there right like you you kind of know, maybe not in the eighties we didn't. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? We, we didn't know shit. Like Scorpion and all these stupid ass fucking action movies, and that you know we made parodies of them. One of my favorites is fucking Hot Shots, fucking Charlie Sheen. I fucking love that guy. Everyone hates him. I fucking love Charlie Sheen. I think he's hilarious. He's fucking, I do too. He's the most real motherfucker. I think he's real. Exactly. He's the only he's real person in all of Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I had that much money at, at that age, I would have done the same goddamn thing. I would have. I'd, I'd have like hypocephal, fertil, whatever AIDS. Like I'd have all, every fucking STD you can imagine. If I was a twenty-four-year-old guy with you know that much cash floating around. So anyway, we, we made we, we kind of came out of that as a culture. We kind of started realizing how silly it was, and. And you know that it funny enough, it's re- reflected through art through Hollywood. Um, who started making parodies of these things. But at the at the bottom of it, like you know why I joined the military? I I want to top gun. I want to be a fucking fighter pilot. Is it right? Yeah. I was actually I I almost got into the Naval Academy, but I was like I told you, I grew up in Indonesia, so I got nominated and everything. Congressman nominated me and all that shit, but um the hospital there didn't have fucking an ekg or whatever the fuck i forget but my medical record was incomplete so i didn't get appointed and i fucking killed me yeah i bet so i uh anyway i came back to the states and uh i applied it well they sent me a letter they're like you should apply again excuse me and so I did, and not, again, the fucking hospital lost my med record or whatever the fuck, and I did get in the Naval Academy. And I was like, you know what? Fuck it, God damn it! I'm joining the fucking Marines. Fuck this, and then I'll go be a fighter pilot. And, you know, I thank God for that because, and I have all respect for pilots, but still do. I fucking love aviation and shit. Because I, when I grew up flying around the jungle and fucking Cessna 185s and super cubs and shit like that it's just i fucking love that shit i actually want to get back into it and I, by the way i i've heard from other veterans i that that is if you want to be free and fucking get away from everything and just have a release that's not drug induced <laughs> thank god for the va but you get push out too many meds sorry yeah uh, yeah you do you want to just fucking yeah. experience a little release Go fucking start yep. flying. Yeah, I I agree. <laughs> and I and I actually that's still on my bucket list. I still yeah. want to do that. I just went three weeks ago. Hit. Oh really? It is gorgeous. It's amazing, it's gorgeous right? flying out here. Yeah. And I love like all the shit that makes people freak out in, a, in an airplane when you like drop down like two hundred feet all of a sudden. Like I love that shit. <laughs> Me too. It's like it reminds me of being in a parachute, right? You know, flying over a fucking. Uh, a, a road or something with a uh, or or an or a airstrip or something. It's, just, it's like holy shit, that uncertainty. Like, but it's the uncertainty and then knowing, like, I got to fix this right now or I'm gonna die. <laughs> right, like, I'm in right. charge yeah. of my fucking mortality. Yeah. I don't know. There's something about that, and there's something about aviation. I think that that brings that back out in you, and I, you know, I still love that, but. I wasn't, I didn't do it. I wasn't able to do it. So I joined the Marines and I was going to go back in. My, my plan was to go back to the Naval Academy and finish that up. And then I got into recon. And then I started jumping out of fucking airplanes and shit. And 
That was fucking terrifying as fuck at low level. God bless the Aries and Airborne. You guys are fucking retards with fucking big balls. <laughs> I prefer free fall. Thank you very much. <laughs> but man, you guys have nuts that clang together because <laughs> literally, because you fall through the air, you bounce against each other as you fall into the ground. So kudos to the Airborne. Uh, but I preferred the free fall stuff. Um, once I got into that, but um, like, can I pause that thought for one second? I had a question for you. Yeah, go for it, man. So, th- and this is based off of something that I've witnessed in my, in my, my wife being a pastor's kid is how incredibly disciplined she is in life. Do you attribute any of your success to discipline, and do you attribute that discipline to your upbringing? And do you... Okay, so to go back, because we didn't talk about this on this thread. Right. My dad is a pastor. I grew up as a, as a missionary kid. Um, and that's a very good question. But I'm probably the most undisciplined missionary. Pastors' kids are notoriously rebellious. Because... Most, I don't want to, I'm not going to ever shovel shit on the church because I still believe in Jesus, absolutely. But I just don't think it's what everyone thinks of it as. I get you, you yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, and Uh, and until I was in this family, I I didn't question it ever. Yeah. Now it matters. But my my parents, even when they were missionaries, my dad was more like an Indian fighter, like a wild motherfucker. Like they just went out in the jungle and hump, no shit would hump through the jungle and with a ruck on. So this is how it worked. They'd get in their Super Cub or Cessna 185 and they'd fly around the jungle and look for smoke. Everyone thinks Christians are pussies. And I don't blame them, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't. Most Christians are pussies. Sorry. But a lot of you guys are. Yeah. You gotta fucking get over it. But the people who really believe in Jesus, like, because you've needed to believe in Jesus, and you know who I am. I mean, you know who you are when, when you're like, hey, I can't do this by myself. I need something that's greater than me. And that's when you meet Jesus. Like, it's not some fucking fluffy fucking bullshit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's it's the real right. shit. Yeah. Right. And that's when you that's when you meet God. Yeah. The guy in the fucking trench or the guy's the woman who's being raped or the fucking someone who's being tortured mentally or 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 physically or what have you. That's when you meet God, right? Like that that's when you're like, hey, I can't fucking do this shit by myself. Are you fucking real or not? Right. That's when he right. fuck shows up. He'll show up before that if you ask him, but if that's the only time you ask him, that's he'll fucking show up. If you believe that if fuck, if you fucking ask him, he'll fucking show up. And uh, my dad was like that kind of a guy. He wasn't Jesus. He wasn't. He didn't believe in Jesus because he was such an awesome person. He believed in Jesus because he needed, right, to know like, hey, someone's got my back, right. And this, and dude, this is a whole other conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I studied that fucking book. Right, this book right here. I study this book for many reasons to see if it was full of shit. Like, what? What's fucking going on with this thing? It's sixteen hundred fucking. No, it's uh, it was written over sixteen hundred years by like sixty-two different authors. And it fucking <laughs> comply. It it works somehow. And none of those mother, very few of them knew each other while they were writing it. It's the most amazing thing I've ever seen. It's the best selling book in history. Do you really think God's gonna write a not gonna write a bestseller? Like, but that aside, that aside, I don't want to preach at all. You're fine. I, I'm it's never gonna show. tell anyone. <laughs> I'm never gonna no, but literally. I'm never going to tell anyone what to believe ever. Mm. If you don't arrive right. there on your own, 
then you probably don't believe it. Right. And everybody, everybody on this fucking planet needs to hear that message right now because everybody is doing it. I've been and doing everyone's it. Everyone's telling somebody. you what to fucking believe. Everybody's telling you what everyone's to, telling what to, you what to believe. Who to hate, who to love. Like, fuck that, man. They want to control that everybody yourself. is trying to control everybody else's behavior. And the only person that you can ever control, and even then it's only like halfway, it's like half-assed, right? Is yourself. And that's such a struggle. It's so much easier if I just say, hey, Jason. I can't control myself for shit. <laughs> only by the grace of God that I fucking... Oh my God, yeah. So, okay, so back to your question. Does that... Yes, does that have anything to do with like, you know, a discipline or whatever? I I think I, I don't think so. I think I joined the Marine Corps because I wanted to go to war. Because I want to know who the fuck I am. Right, right. And at the end of the day, I think we all seek that. Yeah. And for me... I thought I was a pussy. Yeah, me too. I was a, I was a little kid. I was a tiny kid. And I was I, I was got yeah. beat up all the time. Yeah, I got fucked with, beat up, like made fun of. I was a little chubby fat kid, and I wanted to prove to myself that I wasn't a pussy. And my dad exemplified this to me of. If it ain't fucking true, don't fucking believe in it. You know? And so I wanted to know, okay, so as far as that, that as far as the whole biblical thing is concerned, he wasn't your normal missionary. Actually, a lot of the other missionaries didn't like him. <laughs> like I said, he was like, a, he was kind of a wild man. But because he didn't tell like uh he didn't he wasn't like a, a super legalistic or... like you kids can't yeah. dance with each other they can't swim in the same i mean there was some weird shit going on in this fucking you know you think of the southern baptist yeah. type he wasn't southern baptist but this whole uh boys and girls can't be in the same swimming pool they can't walk there are christian colleges out there that you can't walk on the same sidewalk with a girl i know <laughs> are you fucking kidding I know. bro it, it blew it blew my mind so my my wife's brother went to one of these colleges and he got like i guess it's okay to talk about he got nice expelled TV. no 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 he oh was, that would have been a good it was one. like I was watching hoping for that <laughs> like sec sec secular i can't say this word secular secular secular, secular movies they weren't like bad movies either they they were just not christian movies. oh no i know i've been through that like, and he had, like, <laughs> had the first top gun i watched we had all the swear words dubbed out of it like, what are you going to do? Protect your kids so much that they all of a sudden just, what are they going to do? Where are they going to live? And you're not going to, here's you know, the your thing. Womb? Your kids. <laughs> oh my gosh. And I went through this as a parent. I'm sure you did too. You, you get this idea in your head that you're responsible for who this kid becomes and how well adjusted they become in life. And nothing could be further from the truth. Like you think every little thing that you're doing early on in that kid's life has such a significant impact later on. But the truth is, is they have their own personality. They have their own spirit and they're going to be, be whatever it is that they are made to be. Exactly. And it's not this just is... your kid. It's the whole fucking future culture, dude. That's right. Remember when you're generation X, me too. Right. I remember when Generation X was like fucking Beastie Boys and all this dudes fucking assholes. <laughs> I mean, Beastie was pretty gnarly telling telling kids stories. <laughs> like I, that was pretty gnarly. Yeah. So, but you know, it, it kind of, I think it kind of egged us along to be like, "Hey, fuck you, baby boomers." We. <laughs> but my point is, each generation creates their own future man you can't push that on them now you can guide them like and i've written stuff about this and been must misunderstood about it actually i call it the the first article i wrote was it's called the decrying of the next generations and 
I changed that because the point of the whole thing was that you can teach genius. You can teach how to think. But if yes, you, you can. And like, look at Socrates, Aristotle, Plato. They were all students of each other. Right. It's just a, a fucking coincidence that three fucking brilliant geniuses were students of one another. They just happened to fucking be in the same. No, it's not because of what they taught. It's about how they taught each other to think. It's not about what you know. It's about how you think about what you know. God damn it. You yeah. have to know the shit first to think about it. But then you have to know how to fucking think about it. Right. And that's the best thing we can teach our future generations. How do you think about what you know? We try and teach them how what to know. Bro, yeah. yeah. You teach your kids how to fucking shoe horses. That's great. 100 years ago. But look, look we don't we don't ride goddamn horses anymore. You don't teach them what to think, teach them how to think about what they know, right? No. So I don't total. We've been on a total fucking rabbit trail. It's all right. <laughs> I, this whole fucking thing is all right. I love it. <laughs> but I mean, you have to have a chaotic brain to to work in the chaotic space, right? To dude, be able to thrive in that space, your brain has to be able to do. I think this is a <laughs> influence of fucking shitload of gunfights. <laughs> We haven't been on any single topic for more than 30 seconds, and I love it. But but I think that's important, dude. You have to you have to be able to um when you can switch gears that fast, you can apply what you've learned about something way over here to something way over here. You start connecting those dots and you can start saying, hey, this that I learned about. For example, the first ambush I was in, the reason I lived through that ambush is because I had been in dive school many years before and had someone hold me underwater and punch me in the solar plexus and I couldn't fucking breathe. And the only way to survive that was to not panic and slow everything down. You know this, you've been this, you've been here. All of a sudden, snap, 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 like you're the first response is Holy fucking shit! like just vomit out chaos and panic. Yep. That's your first, but there's a, there's a fucking cunt hair of a second in there that you have a, a choice and the choices. I can take control of this or I can give into it. Right. Right. It's and when I was being held underwater, getting punched in the solar plexus, that is what taught me how to live through a gunfight. Right. And right. I didn't know that until I was in my first ambush and was like, holy fuck. And right about the you part in the fuck was when I realized, okay, I, I've been here before. I know what this is. I can connect these disparate dots. Mm -hmm. I need to take control of this. Calm the calm fuck down. If I panic, I'll die. I know that and deal with the situation. If you think about it's like riding a fucking dirt bike. If you think about what could go wrong, it's going to fucking happen. If you think about what you're doing, you might still get shot in the fucking forehead. I don't fucking know. It's possible. It's very possible. But if you're thinking about it, you're probably gonna because you're not going to be shooting the guy that's about to shoot you in the forehead. Right? Right. So I think that I think there's there's uh there's a lot of different types of thinkers but i think those of us who've been through some like pretty heinous shit and i'm not just talking about combat i and i'm sorry for you guys that like watch this shit and are like man you guys are only talking about veteran shit <laughs> no it's not man this is life right it is life it's, it's, it applies to everything right it, the, the difference is is somebody who's been to combat understands that there's this animal inside of us who's always trying to get control hmm. always the animal's trying to do whatever the animal is trying to do at that moment dude and you you have this 
do you have this divine spark in you too this this thing that is of god this thing that is all order all control um and, and all peace too because it's it's the calm in the middle of the chaos right and that's the part of your mind you can call it the it or whatever but i call it i call it the animal and i call it the god hmm. um, i call it the beast yeah because I've, I've written shit about this or the dragon yeah you could you called it the dragon right yeah yeah i read yeah. that yeah exactly yeah. yeah yeah there's a there's a there's a it's a dichotomy that when you and peace isn't what people think it is peace isn't happiness no no peace is that clarity i think it's clarity in the middle of something chaotic and i think that's what we all seek we think we seek money, we think we seek fame, we think we seek, you know, we seek peace. But you don't have to have calm to have peace. You That's have right. Clarity. The clarity. Well, you can't you can't have you can't have peace without the chaos. I mean it would have no ah! you can't have... would steal the fuck out of that. You can't yeah. have peace without the chaos. You can't. I mean, you can't, you can't have. At least you can't fucking discover what the fuck it is. You now, you might be a fucking Zen Buddha monk motherfucker sitting on goddamn Machu Picchu, smoking a joint with fucking three tabs of acid and be peaceful. That you know, you might. That ain't peace. But would you? But would you appreciate is, it? Exactly. Could you appreciate it? Peace is peace is the clarity, my friend. Peace is the clarity. Yeah. I mean it's the cold drink of water. Yeah. In the yeah. desert. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's 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 the simple things. Yeah. You know. Um I had a thought and it, and it left me. <laughs> That's what I kept repeating. You need to write that shit down, bro. I do. I, I need to get back to journaling. I used to I used to journal like every deployment. And when talking about PTSD, I think that's one of the things that helped me to maybe overcome it a little bit quicker was after every after every patrol, after every mission, every whatever, I would come back and I would write. And immediately okay. I could start divorcing the emotion from the memory of that. Huh. And today I can think back to the most terrific times and um there's no emotion sounds bad right but it's not no, dude. i guess there's I, emotion but there's that's not, what I, uh, dude. the worst part about that shit is like i should be fucking more ashamed or i should be more sad or i should right. be more horrified right yeah guilt it's i remember guilt. seeing a fucking i remember seeing a carload of kids I hit a telephone pole and I just, all these little spider webs on the windshield and I just drove right past and I was like, that I didn't. The fact that that doesn't bother me more bothers me. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yep. Yep. Because I know. You, you, unless you're a complete sociopath right you lose a little bit of yourself yeah every time you take a life well okay i speak from my paradigm that's the only one i can speak from right with any authority but i think this is true <clears throat> i was talking to uh an nsw buddy of mine and uh he was talking to guys, just, he was talking about guys that he went through buds with who were like the class clowns, right? <clears throat> and now they were like in dev group doing these direct action missions all the time. And they're 
he said they're just they're they're dead you look in their eyes and they're fucking dead mm. i don't want that i don't want that yeah and i'm like yeah i don't want that either. <laughs> I, want to, I want to enjoy my life it's hard enough it's hard enough now i know that, dude. right i mean could you I imagine think... i know exactly what you're talking about because i know I know a lot of guys that have been through that shit that have been through like have been tier one or it doesn't even matter the grunts dude the grunts had it fucking worse than any one and all this fucking special operations bullshit, whatever i can jump out of a fucking fuck you man you got 18 months in fucking iraq are you fucking kidding me and you're they gonna not change? Yeah, that's right. And I don't see any. By the way, I don't see any fucking support groups out for them. The Navy SEAL Foundation, Special Forces Foundation, Fort Mary Force Recon Foundation, fucking blah 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 blah. I don't see any fucking thing for the goddamn grunts. It pisses me off because they did most of the shit. We did three month fucking deployments, man. 18 fucking months are you goddamn kidding me <laughs> yeah it makes me uh, yeah no uh, i don't think we're supporting the wrong people man that's why these guys are putting guns in their mouths it's part of it i think yeah um i mean from 9 11 until i turned i turned 30 I th turned 30 on this hilltop just north of Singh. And, <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there and I'm wondering like where the last nine years went. And it was all deployment. It was deployment, deployment, deployment. Just boom, 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 you know? Yeah. Gone for six months, come back for six months, gone for six months. <clears throat> I mean, the next thing I know, I'm I'm here, and I'm I'm turning 30 years old, and I, I don't know. I think it's that's I think that's when I resolved that it's time to it was time to go be a dad. Yeah, yeah. For you, brother. But but there's still an itch. I know. <laughs> there's still that, still that itch. I know. There's nothing like fucking being. Oh Jesus. Yeah. So I, when I was turning 40, I thought, I thought I'll go to the queue because the queue, I could still go to the queue at 40, right? Mm -hmm. And I so same thing. I told you that I did the same thing. Was you did? Well I, well, I tried, I joined 20th Special Forces Group in Alabama because I wanted to do the long walk. Yeah. And uh, I was what, 37? Yeah. 38, yeah. I just, I wanted to get back in. I wanted to fucking, that shit, it just never fucking goes away. Yep. Well, and I never will. I, I joined, I joined the guard and, um, which turned out to be mostly Marines, weirdly. Those bastards. <laughs> and, uh, was talking to the recruiter and he's like, he's like, look, my man, when you show up to the safari, you better be running a sub. 12 if you're not running a sub 12 we don't even want to talk to you we don't care about how fast you run after that we want to see if you can do this so at 39 that's not an easy task yeah that's not i, know, I took this i took the fucking uh, selection for the long walk and uh yeah i cooked it in under 12 but that was the same the same deal yep I don't know how the fuck I did that, by the way. Right now, I'd be fucking, fuck you. Well, I mean, I'm only, so this has only been um, three years ago now. Oh, shit. Something like that, yeah. Um, I don't think I could do it now, though. It's two more years. Like, two more years of serious lifting has put that much strain back on my body. Um, I was down to, like, one, I had to get down to, like, one like 170 ish i'm i'm 200 that's, right now that's all over two five nine yeah, <clears throat> i gotta be i gotta be small 
to do it. Yeah. Um, so I go, you know, I go through this. I train hard for it. Like I'm training, like I'm dedicated. I'm like, the only way that I fail this is if I fucking die was my mindset that's yeah I, dude and by the way if you want to fucking do that shit that's exactly your how do you have to think yeah yeah whether you're fucking 18 or otherwise if you want to go into special operations that's the only way you can like because you, yeah. it's true if yeah, you can't run that fast <laughs> you're gonna fucking die <laughs> or or you're gonna make your buddies have to drag your ass along and that's even worse making someone like Come on, you can do it. That's the worst thing you can. Ever, if you ever hear that yeah. in your life and you're in special yeah. operations, just leave. Go yeah. away. <laughs> you can fucking do it. Fuck you. Go yeah. away. Go home, and you're not yeah. good enough. Yeah, it, you have to pull true. your own weight, so they don't have to pull it for you. Right. That's right. Because the mission's too important at that level. You're goddamn right. There's only a few of you guys, and you don't want to ever want to be a burden. That's the worst thing you can ever do to anyone. Well, so it was like it was like a day or two maybe before I was supposed to go to Rob, up to Roberts to do the safari. And I was sitting here and I'm looking at my wife. We've been married like four years at that point. And I'm like, I think I just found my Achilles Hill. Because while I would have been fine with this with my ex-wife, it was the norm. My wife now has never been through this. She's never been exposed to that life. Dude. And I am i don't think that I want to, I mean, first off, she's a good person. She's an incredible person, like incredible character. She's patient. She's loyal. I, I don't worry about her like cheating on me. It's just hot. She's 10 years younger than I am. My wife's fucking hot as fuck. Yeah, she's like yeah. 17 years younger than me, bro. It's ridiculous. I don't deserve that shit. And thank God for my great hair. So I got I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, I could do this. I mean, I could go to the and, and I fully believe that I would have made it too. No issues, anything. But did I want to really, is this the life I really wanted? Or did I want a fucking hat? Did I want a title? Hmm. Ah. Was it ego? Yeah. Was it really about like wanting to go live the life? Or was it that I wanted credibility and shit talking rights and whatever? It, here's the thing though. It's not like, it, it's not like, you know, my career was, uh, I, I don't know, like a, a, a pogue or something in, an air wing unit, or I don't know. Yeah, right. You know what it's I'm not saying? Like, you like some shit to live up to. <clears throat> it's not like I hadn't already done it, right? Yeah, like, exactly. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, what am I? What am I trying to prove here? Hmm. That I'm hard. That I that I can do this. That I, should I do this? Is this right for my marriage? And I said, no, it's not. It's not because this is going to destroy this closeness we have right now i'm going to come back a year later and be a different person and she's going to be a different person and i'm going to be back at square one man because maybe she won't quit maybe she won't leave me but we'd be living in this weird space you know and uh so i decided not to do it <laughs> you know that's crazy because <laughs> like, like yes, my wife i fucking love her so much she's she's my best friend that's awesome. Which is fucking crazy. I never, I actually didn't think that was possible before I met her. She's been through hell worse than me, which I think is why we just, we've both been through some shit. But I've thought about it too. And, you know, the only the only thing I've seen to this day to can drag I mean I shouldn't say the only thing but one of the most powerful things you can find to get you past this war shit whether it's post-traumatic stress or whether it's just 
I just wanted to go back and prove something to myself. Mm -hmm. Those are insecurities, man. Right. They are. Is to find someone who fucking accepts you, man. Right. Not, not, not in spite of your faults, yeah. but because like, of your because open, of open your arms. Faults. Like, right. hey, doesn't yeah. really matter. I love you. Yeah. Like, holy fuck, bro! I didn't think that shit existed. It does. By the way, if you're in a relationship and you don't have that, then fucking bounce. Yeah, you you can tell the the weirdest, kinkiest shit in your brain to, and they don't look at you cross-eyed exactly like, that's dude. the person you want and you exactly and you don't think that's real and it's real yeah. which by the way chicks are way more kinky than dudes so don't yeah. start yeah. that <laughs> don't, try to, don't try to don't try to yeah fuck. <laughs> like once you break that fucking oh, yeah. once you break that shell don't even start <laughs> dudes are all like oh, i'm a crazy motherfucker no you are not no 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 don't. no you're vanilla dude <laughs> yeah exactly uh, you will find a chick that will just scare you yeah and that's the right one yeah that's, yeah. that's the right one like that's whether right. it's uh, sexual or any other way and it, and if you don't have a sexual fucking connection then fuck off but yeah in yeah, every absolutely. fucking way too if you can't just like walk in and see your fucking spouse drinking a fucking dirty martini at fucking nine o'clock in the morning and be like hey what's up baby how you doing i love you like and not judge them at all because you don't fucking care because like they maybe they're going through some shit I mean, fuck, I drink dirty martinis and I drink more all the time. <laughs> but if, if that's something that you would otherwise find find something to be judgmental about, man, go get go get someone else. Yeah. I and he, dude, we're going back to the divorce thing. I see it happening. We're spiraling mm -hmm. back to that. I think that's the main thing. I, I couldn't be me. I couldn't be me around that person. I had to like pretend to be someone else in it. And they couldn't be them either. Yeah. Which isn't fair to anybody. Exactly. And so no matter what the pain that we put each other through, my question to them would be right now, are you happier now with who you're with? And their answer would be definitively yes with vehemence. <laughs> and mine would be yes too. And so I would say it's a win. So, you know what, actually, I actually wish I would have left my wife, my ex-wife sooner. Because I would not have created all the damage that I have created. As soon as I saw those earmarks of like, hey, this is, I didn't have the balls. Yep. And it, it takes balls. seven. Because yep. I'm a special operations dude. I'm a Marine. I'm a whatever. I'm a fucking whatever. Yeah. I will stay in the fight. I will never quit. I will, dude, it doesn't fucking always work that way. That's right. It doesn't it's work not. that way in war either. Like sometimes exactly. you sometimes gotta know, you have to to know fucking, how to break contact. Set up yeah. your and fucking right. break contact. Right. Exactly. You have to know when. So you can go back another day and kill all those motherfuckers. Didn't think of it that way before you said it. I know Insightful. This, this is a strange way to fucking end this, but I think we're going to have to pretty soon because we've been going on for a while. Have we? How long have we been going? Jesus. Fuck. At least an hour. Yeah. You can tell. But we got to bounce, man. I love talking to you, man. We'll do this again. These are important yeah. things. Maybe, you know, maybe the two of us will have other people on sometime, too. I'd like to interrogate other motherfuckers with you. Hey, do you uh, do you know Rick Lamlin? Mm -mm. You don't? Uh, I thought maybe you guys had served together. No. no. But, uh, dude... If you um, if you have any buddies or whatever you want to, well, know, yeah, actually, yeah, uh, let's let's. Uh, I'd be more than happy to get you know several of us on here talking about this stuff because this is this is the, this is the real shit. We're not. There's no fucking. 
obviously no sugar coating here. So I appreciate you, man. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, I got this, I got this one friend that he, he always busts my balls, right? Like, um, I'll tell you this because it had a bearing on what you were saying earlier in the week <clears throat> before you go. Um, he's, he's older. He's a lot older than me. He's like 55, I think, something like that. He was in Mogadishu. Um, and he has this nonprofit called Project 2.0. And it's designed for veterans who want to become entrepreneurs and teams them up with a mentor who is in their field for what they want to start a business in. Seems like a great concept. Well, so he's mentoring me and I'm asking him question after question, after question, after question. And he gets pissed off. He's like, you sound like a fucking like brand new sergeant in a leg unit with you need the, the perfect plan. He's like, just go fucking execute it. <laughs> <laughs> and I got, and I got pissed off, which let me, which immediately let me know that what he was saying had a lot of validity because I got pissed <laughs> off, right? <clears throat> but he doesn't pull punches either. Yeah, I'd like to bring him on. Fuck yeah, let's do it. He's, he's a cool guy. All right, Marcus. Let's do All it. All right, man. Dude, thank well, you. Thanks man. for having me. Oh, fuck. My pleasure, brother. Let's do it again, okay? All right. Good. All right. Well, thanks for watching fucking The Perfect Fucking Life um, with Marcus Sylvanus. Um, man, I really enjoyed and learned a lot from you, my friend. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, sir. I'm, I'm really glad that I reached out and randomly sent that message to you the other day. Yeah, man. My fucking pleasure. Um, it's, it's, uh, It's a travesty when you have a conversation with someone and you don't learn something from them. Yeah, it is. It's such a waste of such such a waste of time and mental Life. energy and, <laughs> yeah. and and the mental energy is very finite at our age. It is, dude. It really is. It's weird, but you know, I heard it said that uh, what youth is wasted on the or the youth is wasted on the young or some shit right youth is wasted on the young yeah but i've also heard it said that wisdom is wasted on the old yep like there's some people i know that have never changed since they were 25 years old i want to talk about that next time um i was just reading something um out of the scientific community that was explaining why, and it has to do with an addi addiction cycle. I was talking to you about it in that message. Um, you can re rewire the brain though, to break that. Mm -hmm. And I've got an idea about how to do it. How okay, to, how we need to talk about that shit. Cause that's a huge thing for guys like us. We have to have stimulus.